Uh, right, this is the news hour at six, and coming next, see the stars like you've never seen them before. I'll be speaking to the rock legend and also astrophysicist Brian May. Welcome back. The uh, rock legend Brian May is also famously an astrophysicist. Now he's offering us the chance to see the stars like we've never seen them before. His new stereoscopic book, Cosmic Clouds 3D, takes readers inside nebulae, uh, the birthplace of the stars. And uh, Brian May joins me now. Uh, there he is. Thanks very much for being with us. So a big night this for Brian May, the astrophysicist. Uh, tell us about this virtual journey into space that's happening this evening? Yeah, we launch at 8 o'clock on uh, the Science Museum's uh, YouTube channel. They're very kindly hosting it. Yet the journey is amazing. It's never been done before because these cosmic clouds, these nebulae, are too far away to actually photograph in 3D. Luckily, I came across this amazing person called J.P. Medsavaino, who generates 3D pictures by using uh, the available astronomical data, and he takes the pictures himself. Um, so this is the first book ever which is actually talking about the, uh, the, the nebulae and the way the stars are born within them, but also you, also you can see it in 3D, and it's as if you were there, kind of floating beside them. It's amazing. Yeah, I, I, look, I I've, been, amazing. Yeah, I've, I've been looking at the book and the photographs using this uh, stereoscopy. Uh, you better just explain what stereoscopy is. This is the book. Stereoscopy really is what we all take for granted in everyday life. The fact that we have two eyes instead of one means that we get two views of the universe at any one time, just very slightly different, and things will be slightly in different places between the two views. So with stereoscopy, you recreate that. You make sure that the right-hand picture gets to the right eye, the left-hand picture gets to the left eye. Your brain does the rest, puts them together, and magically constructs this 3D image in your brain, uh, in your head. So that's what we'll be doing tonight. It's not only the first um, launch of such a thing on, online, but it's also the first 3D launch, and we're hoping that people can watch it on their phones. If you have, if you have one of these, as yeah. I've been advertising on my IG, <laughs> then you can watch it in 3D. If you don't, you can watch it in, in 2D. You, know, you can watch it flat if you like, but we will be showing some of the pictures tonight at the launch, and if you have any kind of stereoscopic view, you can see them in 3D with us. Yeah, well, that's good. I mean, this book follows a book um, on the, um, you know, the 50th anniversary of the Apollo 11, the moon landings. Um, what that's do you make odd. of what's happened in the last half century in space? It's been very odd, isn't it? Everyone was very excited, and it seems so modern to me, the fact that men were on the moon. Uh, but in fact, 50 years later, nobody else went. Uh, so it's very exciting now that the, the, the chase has been taken up again, I think, and, and obviously we're heading for Mars as well. It's amazing. I mean, it's not like nothing happened in that 50 years because all kinds of probes have been put up there that are, that are unmanned, and you get some incredibly exciting results from those as well. I mean, I, I've been involved in a couple of missions, particularly the one that went to uh, Pluto, and when those images came in, we actually managed to get a 3D image out of that, um, it was incredibly exciting to be in the control room of New Horizons and you felt you were actually beside Pluto making the, the, uh, the, the flyby yourself. It's, it's great stuff that's been done over the last 50 years. Yeah, and Mars, the red planet, is now the subject of great attention, obviously, with the search mm. going on for signs of life. Where do you stand on this whole idea, the possibility of life on Mars? Ah, it's a complicated thing. I mean, there's a bit of a worry that we might have polluted it anyway, and some of our microbes might be there. But, of course, there is kind of cross-pollination between the planets anyway, because if there's a big enough volcanic eruption on Mars, bits of stuff from Mars will land on the Earth, and they have landed on the Earth, and vice versa. So there may have been a little bit of interaction anyway. Uh, so I think it's possible we may discover some kind of microbes on Mars, but I think it's fairly well established that it doesn't have a life as we know it. Uh, and as far as the rest of the universe, who knows? It's very hard to tell. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, the, the list of probabilities is, is very difficult to work out. And this whole space race now being privatised with these companies, Elon Musk and uh, Branson and uh, um, Bezos, mm -hmm. the Blue Origin, uh, do you, who do you think will win that? Oh, God, I have no idea, really. <laughs> May the best man win. I don't know. If I had to put my money... I don't know. Probably Elon. Yeah, he seems <laughs> to have the, uh, the determination. <laughs> but, I mean, do you fancy a quick, if expensive trip uh, 
into space? Are you, oh, are you, the, you could, because they're doing these trips for private astronauts now or planning them to the International Space yeah. Station. A, will it happen? B, do you want to go? I think it'll happen. I think um, probably my days of astro travelling are over, don't you think? You know, I'm, I'm a little old for it, really. I, I'll view it from my armchair. Yeah, but you seem so passionate about it. I thought you'd be first I on am. the list. No, I don't particularly want to go up there, I don't think. I mean, I don't want to do the short trip, that's for sure. I mean, if I could sit in the International Space Station for a while and look down on the Earth gradually rotating, yeah, I think I would go for that. I'd settle for that. Yeah, take some uh, Queen music up there. Well, listen, good luck tonight. Don't invite me. <laughs> good luck tonight. <laughs> Thank you. Thank yes, we'll you. see you at 8 o'clock on the Science yeah. Museum YouTube channel. Yeah, OK, Brian, you've got your plug-in. Thanks very much indeed. Plug, 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 yeah. <laughs> Thank you. Nice to talk to you. Right.